My friends, on this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, today I'm reviewing a product from Decathlon. This is their Short Trek 700 4 Clays Pad. This is a very interesting product, especially for summertime use. If you want to go lightweight, this here is an interesting sleeping pad option. Over the course of the summer, I've been testing this product out, and I'm ready to share with you all my agenda-free review. What does agenda free mean? That means that I don't care if you buy this product or not. I get no kickbacks. I don't make any money. I don't care. I'm here to share my thoughts, my opinions, and that is it. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start with a review now. To start off, everyone, let's focus here on the pad itself and the storage bag. As you can see, this looks rather tight, and that's because it is. Unfortunately, the storage bag here is very, very small. The overall stored dimensions here is roughly 3.3 inches wide by 8.3 inches long. But again, this storage bag, it's just way too small. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. What you receive with this sleeping pad is a repair kit, the storage bag, and the pad itself. Let's go ahead and inflate the pad now and then go over some stats. As you all saw there, it took seven breaths to inflate this pad. When it comes to the measurements, you're looking at 47.2 inches long, 20 and a half inches wide, and it offers you 2.2 inches of cushion. The weight of this pad with the storage bag is 13.3 ounces. It's right around 12 ounces without the storage bag. The pad features eight air chambers. It has two valves. One is a one-way for releasing air, and the other is a two-way, which means that you can inflate this pad, you can stop, air will not escape, but you can also release some air by pushing on the nozzle to make the pad less firm. The pad comes in one color, gray. It features an R value of 1.6, and it is available in only one size. There's no extra wide versions of this pad. When it comes to the materials, you're looking at a combination of thermoplastic, polyurethane, and polyester. This here, my friends, is the top of the sleeping pad. Now, there's a few things to note here that are interesting. Namely, these silicone patches, top and bottom. This is an interesting feature to this pad, and honestly, it's not something that I like, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Flipping the pad over, this is the back side. You have the valves at the top, and it does taper at the top and the bottom. So the pad has been inflated, and as you all can see, this is a short sleeping pad, a short sleeping mat. And the purpose of this is that you can go super lightweight with a small pad while still being comfortable because you have the main portion of your body, the weight of your body on this pad, you're off of the ground, and you can be comfortable. The truth is, when it comes to a sleeping pad, you don't have to have your feet on the pad itself to be comfortable. You can have them hanging off, and there are a few benefits to this. Naturally, you go lighter weight, but also you stay cooler. Having your feet on the ground, it's not uncomfortable, and you get to feel that good coolness from the ground itself. In the summertime, you can enjoy those benefits. In the wintertime, when it gets cold, you go with a longer sleeping pad, something with a higher R value. My experiences with this pad go back roughly three months now, and I'm ready to share with you all the pros and cons. The first pro with this sleeping pad is this. The price of this is only $45. Most half mats, those that are ultra lightweight, like this one here, tend to be very expensive. As far as value goes, I'm very impressed. Next up, the quality of this pad is also very good. The cut is very good, the seams are very good. I've had no issues when it comes to leaking or anything like that. For the money, the quality is excellent. Again, everyone, the pad is very lightweight. Now you can find lighter weight pads out there, but you will pay more for them. With most half mats that are lighter weight than this, you will pay roughly a hundred bucks, maybe even more. $45 for a pad that weighs less than one pound, that's not bad. Next up, I like the overall compactness of this pad. When you roll it up, it is a small form factor. The valves here are excellent, and they really work well at their design purposes. The pad is easy to inflate and also to release the air. Also, it's easy to roll up. All you have to do is open the nozzle, fold it, roll it, and you're good to go. So everyone, this is how a half mat works. So you can see here, that my upper body is on the pad. I can rotate side to side. I can lay on my stomach if I want to. And again, my legs are hanging off of the end and it's not uncomfortable at all. It really isn't. With the pads 2.2 inches of cushion, 
It's fantastic. It really does go to show that the design of the pad itself and the way that the air is chambered, it makes all the difference in the world. You can have pads that offer two and a half inches of cushion, even sometimes three inches, and those pads won't get you off the ground. It's all about the design. It's all about the air chambers. With this design here, you have eight air chambers going vertically, and they do a fantastic job of keeping you off of the ground. So you can lay on your side, you can have your pillow here, however you like to sleep, no big deal. As I just mentioned, overall comfort is not bad when it comes to this pad. It definitely does what it is designed to do. It gets you off the ground, you can toss and turn, you will be mostly comfortable. Now let's move over to the cons because there are a few issues and this one relates directly to comfort. You have these silicone patches right here, right? These are designed to keep you in place so that you don't slide off the pad itself. You have them up top and you also have them down at the bottom. Unfortunately, these things are super aggressive and quite grippy. So as you toss and turn, they can actually pull on your clothing, right? Let's say that you're wearing even less. These patches can rip your hair out as you toss and turn. It can be quite uncomfortable. If it's a hot night, you have no shirt on, oh man. This is awful. In general, I dislike these so much that I tend to turn the pad over and lay on the bottom side of the pad itself. I find this to be more comfortable, even with the valve up here at my head, than these silicone patches. Having anti-slip patches on your sleeping pad isn't that uncommon, but having them on top of the pad is. Most of the time, they're on the bottom so that your pad doesn't slip around inside of your tent. I can't say that I've seen anti-slip pads on a sleeping pad before that are as aggressive as this. These are so aggressive, in fact, that they lower the overall comfort of this pad. I understand why the company's done this. You have the silky material of your sleeping bag on top of this, you're sliding around. But the thing is, the material here, it's not really that slick, right? I've definitely used worse, but I mean, there's just so many of these. The next issue that I have with this pad is the fact that it's somewhat loud. As you move around, you can hear air moving between those chambers. It kind of sounds like a bag of chips. So if you're someone who wakes very easily at the slightest sound, this may not be a pad for you because it can be somewhat loud. For myself, this has not been an issue, but you need to be aware of it. I've already spoken about the very small storage bag. My recommendation is to get rid of this, use it for something else, whatever. You can take a rubber band, wrap it around that, and it works much better. And also, you can go lighter weight. So my friends, those are the pros and cons for this mat, the half mat. What do you all think about this? Make sure to comment down below. Also, what do you all think about the Cathlon? Just about everything I hear about the company from you all is positive. And I tend to agree, most things with the company that they produce are excellent. I'm still testing out one of their tents and it does have some issues, but out of all the products that I've tested, that's the only one, so that's not bad. But anyways, folks, talking about this pad, for a half mat, for a summer mat, I do like this. The value is good, the quality is good, the comfort is good. Comfort's not great. Well, I should say this. The comfort's not great if you sleep on it the way that it was designed to be slept on. I recommend just turning this over. Especially if you use a quilt or a blanket, you will be much more comfortable. Even with the sleeping bag, as you toss and turn, again, there's so many of these patches, it can even pull at your bag and it can be irritating. It certainly can wake you up as you toss and turn. Talking about using these pads for a second, I like to use these with temperatures above 50 degrees. Once it drops below 50 degrees, I like to go with a full size pad. For summertime use, I definitely like these. And my question for you all is this, do you happen to like half mats, short mats, or maybe you dislike them? Comment down below. Share your thoughts, everyone. Overall, folks, I like this pad quite a bit. I like it enough to purchase the full size version from Decathlon. The weight of that pad, it's just a little bit more than this, so that's not bad. Now everyone, before I end this video, here's a message directly for Decathlon. When you go onto that website and you type in sleeping pad, guess what? It brings up sleeping bags. Type in air mat and it brings up foam mats. There's some work that needs to be done on that site. That's a small complaint, of course, just some advice for Decathlon. Everyone, thank you very much for tuning in for this agenda-free review. Make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts about this pad, and also about the company. Share with the community. Make sure to hit the thumbs up because it also helps the channel. Everyone, take care, be well, strength and honor. Bye for now.